Hey friends, David Watts here with another Luminar 2018 video. Hope these help you a little bit. If you like what we do, please click subscribe and that helps us a lot. Most of us you know, do these little videos because we like to help, uh, but it's also nice. We get a little bit of advertising revenue from YouTube, which is kind of nice. Um, but YouTube has recently decided to change up uh, their whole advertising model. And unless we have a thousand subscribers, we won't get any little bit of revenue. I think for me, maybe I've got 50 bucks sitting out there. It helps a little bit. So anyway, if you can be sure to subscribe if you like the videos, I sure appreciate that. And uh, we'll try to keep making these no matter what, because it's kind of fun to share tips and tricks with each other. Anyway, I thought I'd show you three quick things today. One is how to maybe arrange your environment or just get to know your environment in, in Luminar 2018 a little better. Number two is how to, how to rotate uh, and crop, and uh, that's a question I've gotten a few times in, in the comments. And the third is how to um, use the tool here. Really, it's called the, the clone and stamp tool. Let me get it to open here, clone and stamp. How to use that to clean up pictures. So we'll look at those three things real quick. Uh, first of all, you'll notice down here, I've got the bottom panel open, and that is normally something I close. And so I just want to show you where that's controlled right here. This is the preset panel. It's better, I find, to close it. Now, you might have some presets you really, really like. Great. Use them and then close it up. You need the screen space unless you've got, you know, a great big screen. I'm working on my laptop today, so I can use the screen space. Sometimes you even want to close up the side panel. And so that's controlled right here with all the filters. The other couple of quick things I wanted to show you is right here is the um, uh, histogram. All right, so you can open and close that. Here is the layers section. So if you've seen some other videos, we show you how to use some layers. So that's controlled right here. Sometimes you might prefer to close that up. Usually I keep that open. And finally, here's the information. It's just a tiny panel. Frankly, I wish there was just a bit more. I'd like to see shutter speed up here. I haven't found a way to add that or to, um, uh, to, to have that added. So maybe that's something Luminar, uh, the folks at Skyland can do for us. I like to see shutter speed here as well. But anyway, that doesn't take up much space. But just wanted you to see, first of all, how to control all those. And my suggestion to you is generally get rid of the presets. They take a lot of screen space, and it's better without it. So that's number one, just a quick tip. Number two, how do you rotate the image? And that's a question I see a couple times. So it must not be as, as easy as I think it is. Here's the answer. Crop. Go into the Crop tool. It's under Tools. Go to Crop. All right. And just right here on the side of it, you'll see how the cursor changes into sort of a rotation type thing, and just click and drag. And use these grid lines to help you find some sort of a straight line uh, that you can use as reference. Maybe here, in fact, if you will look on this cup where it says real T, and maybe let's just try to make the T kind of straight. And there we go, maybe that's roughly straight. Um, the other thing is, you know, cropping as a whole, um, you can do free form or you can keep the image to the same ratio that it originally was. That often can be good. So if you do that, you'll see we keep the same ratio of image. All right. And, and Luminar is not going to throw away this part out here. If you accept this, let's do that. And then you decide otherwise, come back in. That image is still there. You haven't thrown anything away. Oh, and as you can see, I accidentally sort of transposed it there. Let's, I changed it from a 3 to 2, uh, which is what it normally is, to a 2 to 3. So we can flip it back up this way, I think. There we go. And we can stretch it back out, make it just as big as it originally was. So anyway, that's how you do the rotation. You can do it just like that. Of course, if you have some big movements you want to make, I think you can do that, yep, right here, 90 degree sort of rotations. But for the small fine tuning, just do it right here. Okay, and the final thing I thought I'd show you, so that's number one and two, we covered it quickly. A little bit about the environment, number two, how to rotate images. Number three, how to use the clone and stamp tool. One thing I'll say about it, based on what I've seen, maybe somebody will correct me, but I think it's best to use the clone and stamp tool at the very end. So when you've done all your other adjustments, when you've, if you've, like a portrait, if you've done skin softening, other things, do all that other stuff first. Make this the last thing you do. Because when I've, 
when I've later gone back, if I, if I do uh, some, um, oh, I'm trying to think of a good example. If I, if I do the, the, the um, uh, clone and stamp first, and then I go back and do some skin softening, it doesn't always seem to give me the results I want. So experiment with it yourself, but I find it best. Do all my other stuff first, and then the clone and stamp. So the way you do it is just, again, tools, clone and stamp. And it'll take it just a moment here to get things ready. And here we go. Okay, first thing you got to do is click to set the source. So let's pretend like we want to get rid of the word it's, okay? So we're looking for something else that should be a pretty close match uh, to, to the area we're going to remove. And I'm going to suggest you can often find it in the same plane, maybe the same horizontal plane or the same vertical plane. I'm going to go the same vertical plane uh, because some, the, the light, I think, changes, you know, from here to here uh, horizontally, but is about the same vertically. And that can be an important thing to get good matching material. Essentially, this source is where the program is going to look uh, and where it's going to draw from in order to obliterate uh, the word it's. So we'll click right here. Then the cursor changes. This is now the shape of uh, the paintbrush, essentially. And I can control the size of that. Um, on the Mac keyboard, it's th these braces kind of symbols, uh, kind of the upper right, just above the return key. Uh, I can go smaller, I can go bigger, all right? So the other thing you can do is set the softness. The softness, if I, let's do this. Let's make it 100% soft and let's make the tool quite big. The softness is that second, that outermost ring. The, the ring that's circled by the orange is the kind of the key area where we're painting. And the rest of it, that soft area, sort of trails off the effect. And, and so it can be very useful to help the painted area blend in with the rest of the area, if that makes sense. Um, we'll reduce the size again now. The other thing you can do is adjust opacity. At 100%, what you're painting is solid. All right, The, the underneath will not shine through, so to speak. Um, if you were to reduce opacity to 1%, then basically 99% of what's underneath will shine through. But at 100%, it'll, it'll totally obscure it. So here's, let's, let's just try a little. Now, the thing is, as we click and drag, that's one way we can do this. You see, we start painting over this. And, and the source moves. It's sort of reminding us of where we're pulling from. So you, it's kind of good to keep an eye on that source and make sure that you're not about to, to run over some area that you really didn't want to, to, to run over. Now, as you see, when we're doing this, we sometimes get some little extra spots we didn't anticipate. And so what I'll often do is update my source position and I'll hold down the control key. Let's see if I get this right. It's actually the option key, I believe. Yeah, it's actually the option key on the Mac. I'll hold it down to select a new source. So I'm gonna come over here just a little bit, just kind of get out of the area. And I've picked a new source and then very carefully this time I'll just sort of click. I won't necessarily drag too much. I'll just click a little bit in that area and do it a few times and that pretty well gets rid of it. The other thing you sometimes I like to do uh, is just sort of click randomly within the area we've replaced and it just seems to help avoid any unpleasant artificial aspect of this this uh, clone and stamp by just sort of clicking in a few places. It just kind of, I think, disrupts the pattern, makes it look a bit more real. If you noticed up here, I, I did because I was using a little bit of a soft brush. I got a little bit of painting essentially in this area between the L and the T and it, it rubbed off. I'm not trying to do it perfect right now. I'm just trying to show you the technique and you can practice with it uh, on your own. A couple of things to remember though. Uh, you've got the ability then to, to back this out. So here's all the brush strokes we made, okay, all the way back to the very beginning. So you need to go backwards, no problem. Just go back and start over. Uh, and finally, when you're done, then click Done. What that'll do is it makes a new layer. So uh, unlike other cases where you have to sort of deliberately say, I'm creating a new layer, this one just does it automatically. So here's your original image down here, okay. And you'll notice the original image still had the word it's in there. 
here's the new clone and stamp layer laid on top. All right, and you can always turn that off and back on to see the effect. And in doing that, you will be able to notice where I messed up a little bit. See this L and the T, when I turn it back on, you'll be able to see how I got it a little bit wrong. But that's the point. You just have to practice with it and play with it. So anyway, um, I hope that will help just a little bit, these three things, a little bit about just controlling your, your workspace, your environment, um, then a little bit about cropping and, and ro especially rotating, and this third little bit just about how to sort of clone and stamp and, and, um, and get rid of things. Oh, one last thing, by the way. When you save Luminar files, maybe I should do this on uh, just one little uh, video all by itself. You know, it's always good. Uh, whoops, let's try this again. File, save. You're saving a Luminar file. Uh, and you can always come back then and, and uh, look at your work and do it again. When you export, be sure that you are sitting on your top layer. If you're clicked down here on the bottom layer and you export, you're going to export exactly what you see. You're going to say, hey, where'd all my work go? Well, you've got to be highlighted on the topmost layer when you click File and Export. And export out to a JPEG or PNG or whatever you like. Just make sure you're on the top layer. Anyway, maybe we'll make a special video on that. I hope that helps a little bit. Just another little set of tips and tricks I thought I might could share with you, and uh, maybe it'll help you somehow. That's it for now. Hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you next time.